welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is rachel anita and i like to do videos on mental health adhd finances just my life in general and today we're going to be doing a q a on adhd mental health alcoholism myself just stuff lots of questions these are all based on questions that you've asked me i couldn't find the person that wrote the original one for a few of them but i you will see the questions up here of the questions i'm getting asked so I'm going to start with the basic ones that I get asked the most. I'm going to be looking over here also to look at the questions because I have a bad memory and such. Before we move on, make sure to subscribe to this video. I know all of y'all have ADHD and memory issues and don't want to do what you're told, but it would really help me out. So let's do it right now. Let's subscribe. On to the next thing. Very quickly, first about medicine and symptoms of ADHD and fatigue and things like that. If you've seen my video in the past, you know I used to have chronic, you know I used to think I had chronic fatigue syndrome and bone pain, but I found out I had ADHD and I got treatment for it and that helped my symptoms a lot. So we're gonna start with what dosage are you on now and how do you deal with crashes? So I am on Concerta or Methylphenidate ER, 36 milligrams. I used to be on 54, but I went down. I used to be on 18, I went up. 36 milligrams is my current dose and I feel like it's working fine. This is just one of many medications and your doctor and you can talk about the medications that are available to you as there's some available in countries that may not be available in others. And you and your doctor should talk about which is best for you. I haven't tried any of the other ones because I found that Concerta worked well for me. So I didn't need to try anything else. Maybe in the future, but right now I'm on Concerta 36 milligrams. Next, I don't really crash. When I first started taking it, I did crash. Now I don't really crash. I don't know why that is, but I don't really crash. Let me know if you're still crashing after a longer time of taking your medication. But definitely the first few days I did crash. Okay, um, the next question is from JS79. Did you suffer from headaches, migraines too? Yes, very bad ones. Every day, migraine, a splitting pain in my head. And once I got diagnosed with ADHD and started taking medication, it was so improved um, and again i don't know if this is adhd i just know that the treatment worked for it especially for this symptom and i still have headaches every day sometimes sorry i still have headaches sometimes i still have migraines sometimes but it is so much better like just so much better and i'm just so thankful that the medication worked well for me and that it dealt with that symptom of whatever it is that i have so yes i had headaches and migraines if you have ADHD or if you think you have ADHD and you have really bad headaches and migraines, I hope that treatment works well for you like it did for me. The next question is how have your medications been working lately? Mine have been working well. Um, but when I first started taking it, they were working super well and I think that's because I was in a really great mental place. My depression was gone, my anxiety was gone for the first time and I was just in a sp space to try out this new medication and I didn't have any issues with anxiety or raising heartbeat or depression because and so it allowed it like a clean slate to just do the good stuff now i'm dealing with a lot of depression anxiety hard times and so i think it's affecting how the medicine works because my brain makeup is different right now um but it's still working a lot better than my old life and i will continue to take it as long as i can Okay, um, the next one was about whether or not I think sleep, like my, my fatigue issues, my muscle and joint aches were my CPTSD or ADHD or something else, chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, I have no idea. I don't know. You know, a lot of the ADHD and attentive type doesn't mention some of these things. All I know, again, is that I got diagnosed with ADHD, definitely have that. I took the medication, it helped my focus, my impulsivity, my, you know, all of that stuff, my inattentiveness. It also reduced my pain. I don't know why. Um, the body keeps a score, if you know what I'm talking about. Your body and like the physical body is affected by your mental well-being. And it's been proven that if you take care of your mental health, you will have less physical symptoms. Um, and so I think my pain, my brain fog, my like just everything was a mix of different things. I think it was my anxiety, my PTSD, my depression, my ADHD. I think it was everything. And what happened to work 
was the ADHD medicine. Now again, I still have pain. Right now, this part of, this part of my arms hurts. Yesterday I had a really bad headache and my whole body kind of hurt, but it's so much better. And so again, I can't tell you what exactly those symptoms are connected to. All I know is that the medication helped me. Okay, that question was from Donovan Flowers. Oh, and then Carolina Musielek also asked about bone pain and if it's related to ADHD. Just want to reiterate, I don't know. All I know is I had bone pain, bone pain. I still have bone pain sometimes. It is greatly improved with the stimulant medication. I don't know. The next question that we have here is how do you handle caffeine? When I didn't have my anxiety or my depression as much, I handled caffeine a little bit better. I've always handled caffeine kind of badly. It brings me like the racing heart and things like that. But now that I'm on medication and I have a little bit of anxiety, I skip the caffeine. I just take my uh, magic line shots and I'll take decaf tea and that's it. And I found that when I have anxiety and I take my stimulant medication, I have like racing heart and things like that. So I have found that caffeine isn't for me right now. It might be fine for you, but for me, it's not worth it because the medication helps me focus and it doesn't give me more anxiety, which is what the caffeine does. Okay, next is, do you get to bed early and wake up early? Does that help you? No, no, that might help you. I sleep at around 12, p.m. 12 a.m. or 11 p.m. and I wake up around 9 or 10. I need 10 hours of sleep um, to function properly and that's just how it is for me. Um, that might work well for you but I am not a person who functions well like that. Raised random heartbeat on Concerta from Mickey Dutch. He might have that. Again, I think it might be attributed to anxiety, but also probably physical issues. This is why you must talk to your doctor before changing medication or changing your dose. It is imperative that you talk with your doctor before doing anything like that because these medications have side effects. For me, this wasn't the case, and but for you it might be, and so you should definitely talk to your doctor because I know that other people have had this symptom or side effect because they've commented it in my video. The next one is, do you have social media so I can ask you something from Poos? I love when y'all reach out. Like, I was talking to my therapist about my YouTube and like, and she's like, what about it is rewarding to you? I'm like, helping people that like are struggling. Because some of you have come back to my channel and been like, I found your video six months ago. I've since been diagnosed, I'm on medication. Because of your video, my life has changed. Things are so much better. And that's just so rewarding to me because I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot of uncomfortable, painful situations and struggled a lot and knowing that sharing this with people helps you, that's great. I do have social media, I'll link it down below, but I'll also attach my Instagram here. I post, I post there often and you can DM me. I respond to basically every DM unless you're like, you're being creepy or something. Um, and answer your questions and chat. I've actually met a subscriber in person and we're friends now um, and yeah, I love when y'all reach out to me. I love when y'all comment me. Comment down below, which you should do. Just introduce yourself if you're new to the channel. I love when y'all email me. My email's down below if your question's longer. I love when y'all reach out to me on Instagram. Love it all. Reach out to me. I love that. The next one is, do you have any sensory issues and what are some of your stems? Yes, I have sensory issues and stems. I actually mentioned them a lot in my other video that I posted recently, another video um, that I'll either link here or it's not posted yet. Um, but my, some of my, I have a lot of verbal stems, so I just like ta say things all the time. Like right now, I'm saying as such a lot, like, and, and such. Like, I'll be like, Jake's like, what are you doing? And I'll be like, I'm working right now, and such. You can add it to so many things and it makes sense and it's just something that I have found that I like saying lately and it is never ending and I say it all day and yeah so that's just one of my stems there's a lot that I do I have some physical stems and yeah do you have sensory issues yes I didn't realize that I did until I really thought about it and noticed some habits of mine that are a little odd and 
So I'll talk about the ones that like have come to mind. I'm still discovering that certain ones might be. But I don't like when my feet touch sticky floors. It is unbearable. I literally need it fixed immediately. Um, just the sensation's horrible. So I'm always wearing socks, always. The next one is I always have my hair up. Right now I don't. The only time my hair is down is for pictures or videos. Um, but I always have my hair in a clip. And I don't know how this clip that's so small holds all my hair, but I always have my hair up. It looks like a messy, messy thing. But I can't have my hair on my back. It's just so uncomfortable. I also need certain, I also like certain fabrics more than others to the point that I will not wear those other fabrics no matter how cute they are. And so I've just, I, that's just what I like. The last one that's so intense that I do every day is I have a lot of um, auditory sensory issues. I operate so much better when things are muted and quieter. I just get overwhelmed and anxious so easily if sound is too loud, if people are talking too loud, if I'm at a party and there's tons of people talking around me and I can't focus. So I wear earplugs literally all the time. I'm wearing one right now. I don't know why I'm wearing one right now. I don't know where the other one went. but. I wear earplugs all the time and I don't know how, I, how this started but Jake hates it because I leave earplugs everywhere but it helps me and I just really like it. it I don't know about you or if that's something that you would benefit from but I just love earplugs like 100% thumbs up definitely recommend if you have auditory issues I thought about getting like reusable ones, but I just haven't found one that I like. Well, I haven't actually tried that much. I just like buying these. I just buy the reusable ones from Target and in like the big packs and those last me like a month before I lose them all. But yeah, so that, those are my sensory issues. One more question that I want to answer is from Elle. How have you been adjusting since relapsing? If you're new to my channel, you don't know that I'm, I'm an alcoholic in recovery. Um, I got sober many years ago and I had about three years of sobriety until November of 2022. The day before I went home for Thanksgiving, I relapsed really badly and had to start my time over. So it's now been like four months of sobriety since the, since the relapse. I don't really think about it that much in like time anymore just because things have been very different for me emotionally. My relapse kind of unleashed all of these emotions that I think I've been keeping in. Again, if you're new to this channel, you don't know, but I had a really hard year last year. My dad got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. I moved to California to be with him and to support my family. I was away from my husband for six months. Um, I saw him a few times, but I was in the hospital every day for like five months. My dad was in the hospital for that long. Um, he left a few times, but he'd have to go back in with infections. He was in comas, he was having seizures. I had to do things that, like as a caregiver, that were things that you never expect to do for your parents. But I did it to make him comfortable and because I love him. And it was important to me. And it was a very hard year. And I'd been holding on to I think a lot of pain. Um, something that relieved the pain at the time, I think the only thing, because I wasn't in therapy at the time, because everything was just too overwhelming, which means I should have been in therapy, was screaming in my car. I've always found that com comforting, putting on music and just screaming in my car. Usually while driving, don't do it while you're driving, but I'm like an empty road. I, that's the only thing that would help me at the time. And, I, after I relapsed, I feel like all of the pain and suffering and stress and grief and trauma from the past six months in California taking care of my dad was released. I was suddenly crying all every day when I hadn't been crying. I cried like maybe twice while I was taking care of my dad. And it was just suddenly released and I, my depression came back. And I think I'd been numb until then, like in flight, fight or flight mode. I was, in, I was in fight mode. And my anxiety came back. And it's just been so hard since then to learn to remanage my emotions and also to realize that this is going to be ongoing. My 
situation hasn't gotten better. It's probably not going to get better. It might get better. That's what Marissa Pierre says to do. But it's not something that's going to be fixed. So knowing that this is an ongoing issue that's going to continue to cause me grief and suffering is very hard. But I try to manage the best I can and I know that drinking will not help and it will make things worse. Um, so I do my best to not, not go there, not try to do that. But yeah, it's been hard. I haven't had that many cravings, but I know that because of the suffering I'm enduring right now in my day-to-day -day life, I know it's more likely than not. It's more, I know it's more likely than it was before for me to relapse. So I'm trying to manage that with therapy and talking out loud about these things to you guys in just any way I can. But that's how I'm managing since relapsing. Um, the last question I wanted to answer is a more interesting, it's like an interesting one I think, was how do you, this is from Dre to Chill, how do you manage a job with ADHD mental health? Do you job hop? Now this is a question that I should probably do a whole video on, but I just wanted to answer it briefly here because they asked. Let me know if you're interested in a whole video about this. But. ADHD, having ADHD or mental health issues is so hard when you have a job. You have to listen to people talk to you about things that you're not interested in. You have deadlines to meet when you're a procrastinator and you can't pay attention. People are talking to you and you're not listening. You have to ask people to repeat things. You, you know, you're just absent-minded. Just all the ADHD things that affect a job. Um, for me, everyone's job is different. For me personally, I thankfully work somewhere that they are very accepting and accommodating for people with these issues. I immediately told my manager when she came on, because she came on after me, like, hey, I have ADHD. There are certain things I need in order to work well, and this is what I need. I said, I need written instructions because I have issues paying attention. I might ask you to repeat things. And I tend to work on my own schedule like I like to know I like to be in charge of when I do things and she was just like this is great you have had a good record here at this job let's continue let's continue that so being open with my manager really helped me and it made us have a better working relationship my whole team knows I stuff I deal with these issues and I just have been vocal I say if someone says Rachel can you do this this and this I'm like Oh, thank you so much for, yes, I could totally do that. Can you actually send me that in written form? And they do, and if they don't do it, then I forgot. They're not getting it done. Um, so that's something that I think is important, expressing your needs. If you work at a place that's less open to things like that, I would consider going to HR or asking for disability accommodations. Talk to your doctor first to try to get a letter from them because you're going to have to get accommodations and at that point you can ask for accommodations or reasonable accommodations because ADHD and mental health issues are a covered disability under the ADA, American Disabilities Act. I haven't gotten to that point yet but I am thinking of doing it. I'm thinking of getting covered for my alcoholism, like my substance use and my ADHD because alcoholism has affected my jobs before and I know it can do it in the future and if I'm protected I will have an easier time trying to get better when not worrying about my job as much because they have to provide accommodations to me because I have a disability. And they can't discriminate against me. They can't fire me if they knew about this. It's like a lot harder for them to do anything. So if possible, think about doing that if you're having a hard time. But also, I know that it makes jobs worse sometimes. Um, so you don't have to tell people you have ADHD if you're uncomfortable or whatever. You can just say, hey, I actually work better. Can you just write down instructions for me? Or like, would it be okay if I wore my headphones while I do this repeated job? It just helps me to pay. It just helps me um, get things done faster or something. Just like asking for little accommodations like that. Being open and honest with your, your, your managers or coworkers um, that you feel like you might be able to trust better. That's what I recommend. Um, someone mentioned job hopping. I haven't really dealt with job hopping, um, but I can imagine why people with ADHD would do that. Anxiety, discomfort, getting bored of doing the same tasks over and over again, not getting like your needs met. 
Again, I would really think about what kind of job you would operate best in. For me personally, I like to be able to do things on my own time. I don't like when people make demands of me that I don't want to do. I need things written down. And people with ADHD and autism and mental health issues tend to have a strong feeling of justice and they're passionate about a certain issue. I myself am passionate about political issues like racial justice and those things. So I got a job in digital marketing that focuses on that thing. So if someone asks me, hey, you should, hey, um, I need you to send that email by next Tuesday. If someone did that to me at some other job, I'd be like, don't tell me what to do, manager. But here I'm like, I wanna send that email because it the underlying thing is an issue that I care passionately about. So it's something I want to do. And so I'm more likely to get that done quicker and listen to do what I'm told. And so finding a job that I believe in the mission or I want to help the patients is something important to me. Like another job that I think would be really good for me if I didn't have like fatigue issues and body issues is being a nurse because taking care of my dad I discovered that I have a great patience for um, taking care of people who are in need in that way. And that is something that I'd be willing to do if it wasn't for my like physical issues. But finding a job that gives you some purpose, you know, even if it's working at a jet job, like working at a gym at the front desk, you can think of it in like a uh, to go on my job, I'm just gonna be scanning IDs or letting people in or giving people towels or cleaning the bathroom. You can think of it as in a way like, I am helping people get more fit. They need me here because if they didn't have me here, the gym would be a disaster. Like just things would be a, like, there would be no one to scan them in or sell the membership so that they can continue taking care of their health. Like, try to reframe things in your mind. You know, if you're a janitor working at a school um, and you're having trouble finding motivation, like, oh, I have to clean these things every day, it's so hard. You can try to reframe it in your mind as, I am so, like, it's so good that I'm able to clean these schools to create the best environment for these kids to have a future. There's probably a lot of kids with ADHD here, mental health issues, and they're definitely going to benefit from a cleaner classroom. There's ways to reframe your mind to find that purpose. Um, and yeah, I would also try to recommend looking for a union protected job if you can. Well, health insurance, obviously, I know it's hard, but yes very important. If you're union protected, it's harder for people to get rid of you, which it's hard finding the right fit when you have these kinds of issues anyway. Um, but if you're union protected or you have some protections in the America, usually it's a little bit better in other countries, you have more security. So you don't have to worry about your job as much. Anyway, I really like this question. I could go really into it, but I won't um, unless you want me to. Uh, but I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And again, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and like and comment down below. I love reading y'all's comments. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you. Bye.